You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Hey Star Wars fans and collectors, welcome to another Black Series figure review. I'm playing a little bit of catch up with a few figures that I've missed over the last couple of years. Um, maybe not even a couple of years, just a short period of time. We're looking at one Jack from the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Um, yeah, it's just one that I passed on along with the Purge Trooper. Uh, for whatever reason, these were sort of quote-unquote exclusives here in Australia, so they didn't come out in a main line, and therefore the price went up to 55 bucks instead of the regular sort of 45 So that was enough to kind of go, you know what, I'm just going to hold out. And uh, yeah, I think I, I think I got this on eBay for about twenty eight bucks. So um, yeah, it was worth the wait. <laughs> it was to save that kind of money. Um, yeah, it was never one that was sort of super exciting at the time, but I'm glad to have it in the collection now. Um, yeah, we'll we'll take a look at it when I bust open the packaging. So I'm going to do that right now, and we'll uh, jump behind the camera. All right, folks. Here is one Jack. Yeah, it's pretty much a, you know, ever so slight retool and some paint differences to the 4 LOM, with the exception of the, uh, with the addition of the bandolier, not exception. Um, yeah, a few different little elements to this figure. He's got holsters for his blasters and he has a little, little thermal detonator sort of thing on his, on his arm there. So, yeah, it's enough to, uh, get this guy out and, uh, you know, I personally think it would have just been cooler to have 4 LOM on a job in, uh, in Obi Wan Kenobi on the planet Dayu, uh, where we see the bounties bounty hunters trying to track down Obi Wan and Leia, young Leia. Um, yeah, I, th I just thought it would have been cooler, but it is what it is. They thought, no, we'll just uh, create a new bounty hunter droid, and it worked fine. It worked fine. Um, so yeah, you got two blaster pistols, both the same, and they look alright. They work well. Pretty sure these are unique. I haven't seen them before. I don't recall seeing them on another figure. They very well may have. You have to forgive me if I've uh, missed that. I do want to see how they just sort of see how they do go. Okay, that fits quite well. So kind of there's a little like a little cylinder groove in the side there. I assume the other side will fit just as well. Perfect. That looks good. I'm, I'm, you know, more than happy with that. I think that looks good. And again, accessory-wise, the bandolier, you'd probably be able to take that off. But, um, you know, being who I am, I'm probably going to glue it in place just so it doesn't wobble around. That's sort of something that bugs me a little bit when figures have accessories. I like to have them sort of part of it. I'm, I'm appreciative that they, are, that they don't just mould them on, but it is probably easier to... Uh, do, do separate pieces as opposed to remolding the entire figure. So, but yeah, I like it to be able to sort of sit and look look like it's meant to be there rather than just sort of floating around a little bit on the figure. This one's not too bad. What I do want to do is see how he holds the guns. He's only got one trigger finger, so I think there's going to be one one blaster that uh, maybe stays holstered. He does sort of use both of them. But yeah, like I said, given that it's a, pretty much a, a reuse of 4LOM, um, yeah, he didn't need two blaster hands because he came with the rifle. He will hold it, but he's not. Uh, he hasn't got the trigger finger, so not a big, not a big deal. It still looks fine. A nice addition to the uh, Obi Wan Kenobi shelf, that's for sure. So in terms of paint detail. Um, Again, it's it's reused the uh, the four LOM head. It's the sort of the translucent green that sort of had everything, all the other details painted on it, which is cool. Um, sort of keeps going on with the the uniqueness of the particular you know manufacturer of the droids, um, whether they're sort of semi biotic, semi sentient in the head area. I'm not sure. From memory, they were sort of modelled on the on the Zucker species, which is why they go together. So pretty much the same sort of metallic colour all throughout, save for the uh, little 
I don't know, thermal detonator wristwatch, which is silver. Some of the little pistons and stuff. Uh, got a little sort of a bronzy gold in those joints. It's sort of hydraulics. And the torso has the wires sort of painted. You know, there's some red, a couple of gold ones, some silver. So that's cool. Just gives it a little bit more depth. But it is a nice metallic sort of color all over. So it does look, it does look metal, which is great. And again, the wires sort of painted on the back. And sort of the gold sort of inlay around the, well, the cracks in the, uh, the pattern in the eyes. You can kind of see that light glowing through there. It takes me back to the old Power of the Force days with the light up eye figures like the Jawa and R2-D2. If I had a little torch nearby, I'd shine it through so you could see it a bit more. But you kind of get the idea. But it looks good. It's some good lighting on this guy and he, um, you know, it sort of pops out. So yeah, we'll go through the articulation. He does have a ball joint in the head. And neck, I'm pretty sure it's a ball and socket under there. It's it's a pretty tight joint. Um, does have ball hinges in the shoulders. There's a swivel at the top of the forearm. There is a sort of hinge joint with that sort of pivoting hydraulic there in the elbow. It just doesn't really get a lot of movement. It's not so straight. Not, not well, just on the 90 degree. It does have the swivel in the wrist, the, the inward ball hinge. And on the other, ha other hand, he has the up and down ball hinge. So this is the torso joint in the middle. It allows for a little bit of movement. But again, he's a droid, so he's a little bit stiff. Um, he's got the ball, ball and socket in the thighs, or the hips. Swivels in the thighs, so behind the armor there, that's nice. He does have a hinge there in the knee, which doesn't quite get to a little bit more than 45. So somewhere between 45 and 90. It might actually be about 45. I didn't bring my protractor. And then a ball hinge in the ankles and the swivel and the foot for the rocker. So you've got all the pretty much good articulation for what you need. Now we're going to do the old, the old peg test. Make sure these feet work. They're a little bit shallow, the peg holes on this one. So... We'll see how we go. We've got the Kessel Run peg here. You know, it doesn't quite get all the way on there, but it's not going anywhere. That's staying on there. Like I've mentioned in most of my videos, we've sort of worked pretty hard on these stands to get them to a point where they will work with most figures. And uh, even then, if you get some quite shallow ones, being the 3D printed nature of the stands, you can almost get a little, little clipper. And you can almost just knock a few layers off the top of the stands or sand them down or something so that you can get those figures flush. But this one's not so bad. Um, you can see a little gap there, but it's so minuscule. He's going to stand up just fine. Um, and yeah, like I said, we do a little bit of a, a comparison with 4LOM. So we've got him here. And yeah, he's a little, little bit different. Um, he came sort of more rusty, sort of dirty looking, a little bit more weathering. But more or less similar colours, maybe a little bit darker on the base coat, maybe more of a more of a black for 4LOM. Of course he doesn't have the holsters which are sort of retrofitted. They look like they're actually an individual piece that they've sort of been able to just attach to the leg, which works out beautifully. These wires aren't painted through the torso there, through the through the stomach. Yeah, more or less. Well, it is, it's very much just the same figure. Same sculpt, same figure. Um, just some different accessories for, for one jack, which is cool. And I dare say, the uh, trying to look on his arm to see... You know, I think the uh, forearm here might actually be a slight retool. Because I reckon that thermal detonator is a separate piece. It looks like it's pegged onto something. But it's hard to tell. It is hard to tell. It's so fiddly. And uh, yeah, if I was up close, I didn't have a phone and a, 
and a light in between me and the figure it would be a bit easier to see but um we'll get a try and get a little close-up look so you can kind of see it's almost a separate piece but it's cool he gets a wristwatch it's his uh, timepiece <laughs> so yeah one jack and four lom together that'd be cool to see actually but yeah, I thought I'd do a little side-by-side -side for the two. But there is one Jack, finally in my collection. I'm very happy with this guy, actually. He looks pretty cool. I do like myself a Bounty Hunter droid. I think they look good. Now, yeah, just got to pick up the uh, the Phase 2 Purge Trooper. And that will get me up to date with the Obi-Wan Kenobi figures for Black Series. So we'll track one down at some point. No rush, but yeah, this one just the opportunity jumped and I thought, no, you know what? It's time to grab it. So anyway, folks, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Appreciate you coming and tuning in, checking it out. We'll catch you again for some more reviews very soon. Till then, may the force be with you always. We would be honored if you would join us.